All right, guys, I am back with my buddy, Marion Sell, who of course is a professional photographer. This man takes absolutely fantastic photos. Seriously. Thank you. <laughs> yes, really, really good photos. Um, he's taken photos with Gal Gadot. He's done shoots this week. He did like four photo shoots, five, six. Um, uh, yep. Yeah, so <laughs> a lot of photo shoots. Yeah. But he's back with us here to talk about, of course, mobile photography. And today we're taking a look at the Huawei P20 Pro. Um, this is a camera that you spent some time with using. Yeah. And um, first question, like, what did you think about the phone as a camera? So I think the, it is actually a really good tool. It's a, it's a fun camera. I, I went right into it without reading any instruction manual. It was very obvious. I, I what's gave happening. him no instructions. Yes. And I didn't really go through like the menu or like look into the preferences very much. I just went ahead and started taking photos. And I have to say they, they look fantastic. Like uh, the camera feels very natural for somebody who's used to being around cameras. I mean, I mean in the same manner as other mobile phones do, but this one has a, has a professional feel to it. And uh, well, the lenses and the sensors are made by Leica, which is a, a very well-known German camera brand. It's actually really fun to, to use this phone. But you're going to take a closer look at some of the things and what you like, and maybe some of the things you didn't like uh, All right. with the P20 Pro. All right, so this photo here, we made it to the beach. I took the phone out of my pocket and took a portrait of her. and. Um, just to see what happens if I just don't do anything, just hit the photo mode, hit the trigger and see what happens. So what happened is, um, I like the skin tones of her, I think that's really uh, well achieved. The quality, the sharpness, all of it looks pretty great. Um, the sky becomes very, very blue and I believe that it is some artificial intelligence thing that's embedded into the phone where mm -hmm. if you just hit the button, the phone tries hard to make the photo look appealing to uh, an untrained eye, I would say. So for me it is a little bit too colorful and too punchy, but maybe for somebody who, uh, who just takes a phone to take random snapshots, it might actually make his photo look nicer to him. Strolling around on the beach trying to find things that I can take photos of. And so I found this couple and I, did, I took a, a snapshot. I was just walking by, so I didn't really aim. I didn't want to be a, a stalker. So I took this photo also with a regular mode and um, looking at it now, I think it looks very sharpened. That's unfortunate. If you So this is the 100% view. If you went even closer now, you would recognize that the bird, for example, has like a distinct white line around it. So it's is the digital camera trying to be um, trying to give you the, the impression of sharpness? Okay. Um, to my eye, it looks a little bit too uh, treated. All right. I mean, to me, it does look like a, a really good shot for something that you <laughs> popped out and you know took yeah. a quick quick photo though. But I guess I'm a little spoiled. <laughs> I went ahead and switched on the black and white mode, the monochrome lens, and I think it's quite fantastic what you can do with it. So I was searching for an object that has a lot of detail to it and I found the driftwood, found several driftwoods, and I think the quality is quite fantastic. Um, this is now I think a 10 megapixel file, you can also shoot 20 megapixels, I didn't know that at the time when I was just hitting buttons. Uh, so I think this looks great. The gradients are beautiful. Um, you see the the sky goes from dark to gray, uh, so from sorry from dark to to bright without any lines. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's pretty great. I instantly kind of fell in love with a black and white camera. You can now searching for detailed landscapes, and in this case, I found the sand. Um, there is something interesting happening in here. I'm not sure if you can see it. I only realize now that there's a sharp edge inside this where yeah. the bottom of the image is sharper than the top. top yeah. I don't know what it, whoops, I don't know where it comes from. Um, there is a lot of detail inside this file. It's a it's a JPEG. I did not shoot raw. This is him sure. in his Navy SEAL days, you know. Exactly. Um, um, yeah, about to hop into the water. So uh, kite surfing, this is a backlit scenario, so I think the camera handles it pretty well. The, um, the exposure, I think, is is good. It makes it look more dramatic to be almost silhouetted. And I think trying to push now to see what information we have in the shadows. Well, still, so, wow, I can still I can. You can yeah, recognize you yeah. my face now. So I, I think it's it's pretty good. You could go ahead and treat this image in order to get the face out and the background keep it dramatic. I'm very curious to see what happens if you shoot a 40 megapixel photo with a small lens and a small sensor. So first things first, I think it's 
quite impressive how much you get out of the small sensor. It's, it's really, I have to say, I'm impressed. But now maybe also that's a, that's a factor why it's a small lens with a very big sensor behind it. So you really get the idea of that you have a small lens there. And you get these, 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 this blur to the side of the frame, which maybe you wouldn't see it if it was shot in 10 megapixel mode, but now you've got a lot of detail. So it becomes very apparent that this, the lens is not as good as it should be for this size sensor. So, okay. I couldn't say that it's a perfect file, like 40 megapixels is a big word. And I, I think I'm curious to see how this compares, for example, to a shot that is taken with a 35 millimeter size sensor at 40 megapixels. Okay. All right, and then we went ahead and went into the night mode. And that's actually a very interesting thing because you can shoot ambiences that seem to be too dark to take a photo of. And I want to say I'm impressed because I'm used to uh, this environment, when I want to shoot a high quality photo of a dark environment, I get the tripod and put the camera on the tripod, shoot like three second exposures or whatsoever, do a lot of things in order to make this work. Another just random snapshot in the street, it's quite impressive. The things you get out of an environment that is actually too dark to take photos in, it is quite amazing. I want to say I'm impressed of this sensor. Um, yeah. Every now and then I end up taking photos of my cats, but well, in this particular case, it is a black cat and it is an environment that looked to my eye like complete darkness. It is really amazing. Um, the, you see the, still a lot of detail, especially with that. Yeah, you can see the eyes. You see the, actually yeah. the big windows in the background. You see them. They're now overexposed because the foreground is so dark that the phone put a lot of effort into catching like, as much light as possible. So it is actually night. This has been taken at, I think, 11 o'clock in the night. It catches all of the, all of the city lights that are being reflected That's in the right. clouds. Yeah. So, and then I did this shot for, of a building. Um, once again, in what I would call proper night time. Um, it is amazing how much detail you can see. Actually, there's a person watching a movie and you, you feel like you could almost go ahead and read the subtitles. Yeah, and definitely. So the, the night mode does 10 megapixel, fi megapixel files. And in order to see, I'd, I'd, I wanted to get a comparison to, uh, to the iPhone actually. So I went ahead and I took the same shot with my iPhone 7 just to see what it looks in comparison. So, I'm sorry, my cats are going crazy. No way. So, I would say that what happens in the nighttime is several images are being stitched together. Um, the telephone gets a lot of detail out of the darker areas and out of the brighter areas and creates something like an HDR photo for you. Um, where the iPhone, in this particular case, only did one single shot. Uh, interestingly, the iPhone's resolution is a little bit bigger, so I think this is 12 megapixels. And um, looking at details now, I recognize the grain a lot in the iPhone photo, but on the other hand, the iPhone photo is, has a natural feeling to it, which in this one here, uh, once again, is very sharp, but much less grainy. Yeah. So we took, we saw a lot of photos, uh, the stuff that you liked and the stuff that you didn't like, but what's your overall take? Do you do you like the Huawei P20 Pro? Yes, I want to say I actually really like the camera function on this phone. It's very intuitive, the professional mode is good, the monochrome lens is, well, what I would say is fantastic. Um, it's, it's a beautiful and powerful tool to have in your pocket because everybody is carrying a mobile phone around with him. So if you can choose between having a great camera on it or a mediocre camera, then I would actually go with a great camera. Um, yeah, so professional modes, Big resolution files, raw files, it's all in there. You can, you have optical zoom. It's a pretty powerful tool. Cool, yeah. there you have it. So um, thank you very much. My pleasure. Appreciate yeah, it. Check out all the photos. We have them in on the link down below. It's on our website. Marion took a bunch of photos there so you can actually see them. And also follow Marion on Instagram. His link, uh, his, sorry, his, his Instagram name is actually down below as well. And uh, you can check out his website and see all his professional shoes. This man takes some great photos. I feel like, I feel ashamed when I gave him this phone because literally when I took a photo and I looked at what I took, I was like, ah, never mind, sorry. Uh, I shouldn't take photos again. But thank you very much. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to the channel, and always enjoy your entertainment. Thank you.